एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर मेंटर फॉर करंट अफेयर्स टुडे गाइस वी आर गोइंग टू डी कोड द मेनी फैसेट्स ऑफ दिस यूक्रेन वर्सेस रशिया वॉर दैट इज राइट नाउ एंड सुइंग सो वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द रीजंस एंड द प्रोबेबल इंप्लीकेशंस ऑफ दिस वॉर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डायमेंशंस लाइक द सोशल कल्चरल डायमेंशन लाइक द इकोनॉमिकल रीजंस फॉर व्हिच दिस वॉर इज बीइंग फॉर्ट द पॉलिटिकल टेक्नोलॉजिकल एंड लीगल रीजंस ओके सो फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द सोशल reasons or the social dimension to this war so guys i hope that you that you all have heard about the division in ukrainian population in itself the east ukraine wants to join the russia whereas the western part of the ukraine is drawn towards the western part of the world like it wants to join the european union and the north atlantic treaty organization thus ukraine is a society divided in itself but why is this divide, division there what is the reason so guys it is rooted in the history of ukraine and russia and the history does not start from the 1920s with russian revolution or 1800s the history of ukraine and russia dates back to 9th century with Kievan Rus so guys Kievan Rus is the ethnic origin of Belarusian Ukrainian and Russian people then down the line in the history there came a point in 1700s when the Russian queen Catherine banned not exactly banned basically she uh, imposed the russian language in ukrainian schools at the same time she shifted the native russians into ukraine then in 1800s there was a time when ukrainian language was banned then came 1900s when majority of the people in ukraine were russian speaking people and guys language is a very important tool to uh, to cover the to uh, basically colonize the minds of the people okay to have more and more people under your influence if you have their language their education controlled then guys came joseph stalin after the russian revolution or the formation of the ussr and joseph stalin has been uh, notori notoriously rem reminded for his dictatorship and guys remember that there was a time when Rus uh, russian president joseph stalin deliberately famined ukraine and the eastern ukraine particularly and when the ukrainians died there he repopulated that region with russian speaking and russian origin people thus you would find the reason why these eastern part of the ukraine wants to join russia because majority of the people their ancestors were of russian origin therefore they feel connected sentimentally towards russia okay so guys the donbas region that i just showed you if you zoom it out then you have luhansk and donetsk regions these two are the separatist controlled regions according to the kievan government and according to these people these are fighting for their liberation or joining the russia so guys these two are the regions that were declared as separate nations by ukraine days before it had declared war on ukraine these two regions were declared as separate nations by russia days before it declared war on ukraine and when this step happened this decision was declared many experts believed that russia wanted to divide ukraine into different parts but as the as per the present situation i don't think that i think that russia wants to annex ukraine completely at this moment of time so guys that was the social dimension of this war which showed you how the people in itself are divided in ukraine next is the political dimension which is of utmost importance now if you want to understand the political dimension to this war, war we need to go back to this chronology of events so here as i told you that joseph stalin's dictatorship was there and many regions of ussr were fed up of the dictatorships thus in 1991 the soviet union collapsed then hap then what happened majority of the nuclear weapons of ussr but there in ukraine and in order to get back get them back from ukraine russia basically convinced the leadership of ukraine to sign this budapest agreement on security now the highlight here is that in this agreement russia agreed or rather promised to respect the sovereignty of ukraine but how much has russia exceeded to its own words that we can see in 2014 when russia annexed the peninsula crimea that belonged to russia that belonged to ukraine only okay but why does this ukrainian uh, peninsula was there under the annexation of russia 
guys for understanding that we need to look into the uh, crimean annexation story completely okay so what happened from 1994 to 2013 the people of ukraine majority wanted to go to eu and join nato north atlantic treaty organization which is a military cooperation or collaboration of atlantic bordering countries okay if <clears throat> ukraine had joined the nato then the countries in the west like us would have gained the access to the border near russia okay and that was the major bone of contention for russia and uh, because of this the war was ensued now this is one of the reasons now in 2013 what happened when eu put forward this deal in front of ukraine to join eu this person viktor yanukovych who was from moscow he denied that deal and sought the bailout from russia thus in 2014 protests broke out he was out from his position and russia annexed crimea as a retaliation to this mass protest but is this the sole reason no crimea guys is a very strategic location for russia because it provides the gateway to mediterranean sea and through mediterranean sea russia exports a lot of goods at a very cheap cost so that is why crimea was of a strategic importance to russia and after this annexation many many uh, sanctions were imposed on russia which weakened the economy of uh, the country okay now that was all the past the all of these reasons were the past reasons or the history what is the present stand of the russian government regarding the invasion of ukraine so according to vladimir putin ukraine is the puppet of the west and the present uh, president vladimir zelensky is very pro west we can all see that now guys people in ukraine were facing genocide and abuse according to vladimir uh, putin so in the separatist controlled region according to putin genocide was happening and in order to denazify the ukraine they are invading it but what kind of protection is this that takes 137 lives in just day one of invasion i don't understand next is the joining of nato and the eu i have already explained this thing now guys before moving on to the next reason i would like to show you this map which gives you a glimpse of the countries that were separated from ussr so here guys estonia latvia lithuania baltic countries okay belarus ukraine moldova then uh, russia to hey kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan uzbekistan turkmenistan and these three are the caucasian nations uh georgia armenia and azerbaijan guys the question of all these countries joining the nato does not even arise because they do not border atlantic as far as these countries are concerned which are in europe so among these countries latvia lithuania and estonia all these three countries have already joined the nato and thus this border of russia is vulnerable now belarusian government is at present very pro moscow therefore it would not join the nato at present and ukraine is invaded moldova is a far fetched location as far as the land borders of russia are concerned next geopolitical development that has taken place recently is that russia has already threatened finland and sweden not to join nato because with finland russia is sharing a really long border and if this border is becomes accessible to the us and the nato countries then it would be a peril for russia therefore it has threatened threatened finland which is in itself a very peace loving country so they themselves had not joined the nato and now with this threat they are definitely not going to join the nato but guys here is a theory that is right now a floating in the market and that theory is that putin is trying to create soviet union again now you will find evidence of this theory in the Kazakhstan protest that happened recently and those protests saw a very active involvement of Putin now with Ukraine invasion we can see that this theory has some relevance we can say but is it the real intention of Putin that only time can tell us okay so guys superpower image of Russia and Soviet Union's resurrection is the one theory the next theory is the pop personal popularity of vladimir putin that was there after crimean annexation but guys i already told you the economic significance of crimea but the invasion of ukraine is now seen as an act of war and a uh, precursor to the world war 3 probably that's why the people of russia are themselves protesting against the war on the streets of russia so i don't uh, think that with this putin's popularity is going to shoot okay so that was the political facet of the 
war. Now look at the economic reasons. I have told you the economic significance of Crimea. That, guys, this is Crimea, and this is the map of Ukraine. So by area, at present, Ukraine is the second largest country of Europe, and the population is 44 million. Guys, this is another theory regarding the population that Russia's own population majority, over 50 percent, are old age people. Okay, and soon in a decade, if this trend goes on, Russia would not be able to stay afloat in the international map. And that's why in order to keep its military forces strengthened, in order to stay uh, afloat on the world map, it is annexing or reviving the Soviet Union because the culture of Ukraine and the, the Soviet countries are very similar. If we don't talk about the Central Asia, so the culture is very similar and with the annexation of Ukraine, the population of Ukraine would help Russia in staying uh, on the international map. That is another theory. Next is the GDP. <coughs> so Ukraine's GDP is 156.6 billion US dollars. And it is, guys, the depositor of rare earth elements and also natural gas, second biggest supplier in Europe or the depositor, not the supplier. Natural reserves, ke natural gas, ke sare reserves in Ukraine mein, that makes it second biggest natural gas reserves in Europe with 1.09 trillion cubic meters of natural gas. Guys, the major export of Ukraine is of wheat, corn, and barley. And uh, this region, guys, is very rich in wheat production. Let me show you this here. This is the wheat basket. And, guys, if this war ensues, the wheat prices in the international market would be high would be high and this would destabilize many economies because wheat is a very essential grain that is used in many food commodities next guys the world level implication of this invasion is that germany has stopped the work on Nord stream 2 and guys this is the gateway or we can say trade route of natural gas between russia and germany so that was about the economical uh, facet of the war now we are going to look at the technological front on which this war is being fought so guys days before the war was declared by russia the attacks on ukraine's ministry of defense website and various military websites had already happened uh, and that attack was sourced from russia according to us and many other countries okay so that there was the attack and also the personal accounts of the people were hacked and they were given the threat messages that Russia is going to soon invade. So this is guys all the psychological pressure that Russia was trying to build on Ukrainian government and the people. Recently, very recently as on 27th Feb when I'm making this video, a group anonymous which is a group of cyber hackers they have hacked russia's websites and one of the most famous websites is rt that is the media house of the russian government that provides the russia side of this invasion so that was hacked but not for a long period of time however small it is but hacking is significant and that too of russian websites so here you can see the importance of cyberspace the war is not only being fought on the land but on the cyberspace as well okay However, there is a speculation that anonymous group is backed by US, but that is the, just the speculation. Now, guys, technology in defense. So the kind of missiles that Russia is using on Ukraine, you would be shocked to know. And this, guys, highlights the scale of this war. So precision guided missiles are being used to destroy the air bases, military bases, residential areas of Ukraine. Okay. A wide variety of missiles have been used and you can see the missiles here. Now guys, not only the cruise missiles, but ballistic missile was also used by Russia. And ballistic missiles, guys, are considered lethal, very lethal in comparison to cruise missiles. Cruise missiles are very dangerous, but ballistic missile is level hi alag ho gaya. So this shows that this war is seriously something else beyond our comprehension and the motives are clearly beyond our comprehension and our uh, understanding now guys the attack is being done from all fronts air land and sea okay from black sea russia is uh, russia is shooting missiles but help is coming in from other countries like turkey has given thro drones latvia luthania has given uh, the missiles and these are the ammunitions that other countries have sent to ukraine but there is a question why are the nato countries not coming in ukraine to fight this war why are they just sending the weapons, not come sending the manpower? Guys, if the manpower is sent, then this would be a clear indication of the World War III. 
okay next is that maybe the countries are feeling uh, hesitant in in intervening in another country's war when us was already uh, stuck in a war of another country for 20 years in afghanistan so maybe that would be the reason that these countries are not showing up for ukraine but definitely they are uh, sending their weapons so that was the technological front now the legal recourse Whenever we talk about international disputes, the legal resource recourse is the international organizations. Here, we can also talk about the sanctions. So this is like the list of sanctions against Russia. And you can see majority of the sanctions are to break the backbone of Russia, the economy of Russia. Okay, so here guys, you can see the uh, picture that shows the major exports of Russia and Ukraine. And you would see the countries that have imposed sanctions on Russia have a very important role to play in Russia's exports. So clearly, Russia's economy is going to uh, is going to hit by the sanctions. Now we have SWIFT ban. You already have heard about it. What is it? It is, guys, considered as a financial nuclear bomb on Russia. So what is it? First, let's know the full form. Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. So guys, it is nothing but the messenger. Like we had a sigma for the Indian Army, okay, that a sigma was the messaging app for secure communication among the army personnel. This guy is the secure channel for communication among the central banks of countries, okay. That is why it was created to ensure the safe communication. In 1963, in Brussels, it was founded and the National Bank of Belgium uh, handles the entire work of SWIFT swift system so it manages the entire functioning of swift along with the uh, central banks of 10 topmost countries but the national bank of belgium is the nodal agency or the nodal bank of managing the swift but who owns this does belgium own it no it is a cooperative guys of its members so all the members owns own this swift system which is nothing but the messaging facility okay like the gmail or your whatsapp for the banks now guys what is the scope Eleven thousand financial institutions in more than 200 countries are a part of swift so they use the swift channel to make their payment or to receive payment now do not confuse swift channel with the upi kind of thing no it does not provide the money transfer kind of service it just provide the information service it transmits the information like gmail does okay so you can consider it with gmail that is the idea of this swift facility now if swift ban is to be imposed then european union approval is needed okay right now uh, many organizations of russia have been banned from swift now we will discuss that also but first you need to know that swift's scope was expanded to include the financial institutions brokerages private corporates etc etc so now it is not only restricted to banks okay so there were talks in 2014 also after crimean annexation to ban russia from swift but why did that not happen at that mo moment because russia is the second most matlab, russia has the second most users in the swift system after us with 300 institutions and in 2020 1.5 percent of the total transactions done through uh, swift transaction as in the information exchange uh, done through the swift 1.5 percent belongs to russia so this is how great it is but there is another reason for that guys european union's approval is needed and European Union has a major trade with Russia, especially in oil and gas sector. That why, that's why the countries in European Union, particularly the key ally of Russia, that is Germany, was not ready to impose a ban of, uh, of SWIFT on Russia. But right now, Germany and many other European countries have acceded to this demand to ban Russia from SWIFT. Now, what is the impact of it? The impact of it is that Russia's exports and imports would become impossible or there would not be any channel because if they import goods, how will they make payment? Payment can be information provide karni padegi or information provide karne wala platform se hi unko ban kar diya gaya hai. So that is how they are, uh, their economy is going to break down. And guys, this is the picture that shows you how SWIFT works. What is the present situation? Let's have a look at that also. 
so here guys commendable recommend uh, commendable leadership has been shown by vladimir zelensky there is a speculation that his and his family's assassination is being planned by russia at the, at the moment however we can clearly say that it is just the speculation but still if it even if it is speculation he has already got the air of it he already knows that if there is something like that going to happen i am going to die my family is going to die but he still he is not leaving his people like ashraf ghani so that is recommend that is commendable on his part right now they russia is uh, extending its hand to hold talks in belarus but he has denied to hold the talks in belarus it is similar to the situation like pakistan is holding peace talks between india and china Ch pakistan is hosting what is the significance of that what is the sense of it okay so clearly belarus is a pro moscow country and it is extending a help to ukraine okay we are going to host the peace talks between you and russia so come to Bel belarus and we are going to host it zelensky has uh, has has not acceded to it okay has not accepted it next is people in russia are themselves protesting against their leader they do not want this war and uh, in ukraine martial law has been imposed and protests have be, have broken out in other parts of the country in front of the russian embassy so guys this is the map of ukraine the red area is the area annexed by russian forces and guys these uh, star like pointers show the explosions that russia has done in ukraine so far 137 people have been killed over 1 lakh people have left their homes this is the casualty that russia has to face and uh, 16 to 18 to 60 year olds have been denied the exit out of ukraine they have been told to fight for their own country 10000 assault rifles have been distributed among the people so guys they are in a desperate need to protect their freedom otherwise they are going to remain colonized for the years to come okay many have sought shelters under in the underground metro stations so this is the present situation now how many indians are there in ukraine guys a total of 20000 students were there out of them 4000 were evacuated basically they have come out but 16000 at this moment are still stuck in ukraine but guys help is coming air india is doing the evacuation work from hungary and romania and uh, indian embassies in slovakia romania poland and hungary have also sent out their teams at the borders and those who are uh, able to cross the borders they have got into the facilitation center and they would definitely come out uh, of the situation now guys this is the last slide of our discussion which talks about india's stand on ukraine crisis so us has moved this resolution in unsc you india has abstained from voting on uh, ukraine crisis resolution against russia now you would understand india's uh, this step once you read this statement by vijay namdyar who has uh, remained as india's permanent ambassador to the un and also the former national security advisor of india what does he say what how does he see this situation so he added while we recognize that our relations with the us have evolved considerably and we have to handle our relations with them with sensitivity they also know that when it comes to actually supporting our interest it has always been moscow that has come forward and not washington so guys this is seriously a tight uh, rope on which india has to walk because now us and 50 other countries have also planned to put this resolution in united nations general assembly also there are also india plans to uh, uh abstain from the vote but still it may see your the relationship between india and us let's see what is going to happen but at the conclusion of this session i just want to say guys please pray for the people who are staying in ukraine the people who are of different origin who are of national who are the nationals of different countries they would get out of ukraine but the people who are of ukraine origin where would they go they have no other place to go except for their homes so pray for them and have a good luck to all of you uh, good day thank you so much for watching the session